to Mushroom Wonderland. Hey, how's it going, my fellow mycophiles? Welcome back to another episode of Mushroom Wonderland. And this is part two of understanding mushrooms. In part one, we learned a little bit about what a mushroom actually is. It's that fleshy, fruit looking weird thing that is growing in the forest. If you're watching this video, you probably know what a mushroom is. And they come in all different shapes and sizes and they grow everywhere in the forests of the Pacific Northwest, as well as yards, sidewalks, landscape beds. You can see mushrooms growing all over the place. So in this series, we are learning about what exactly is a mushroom? How does it reproduce? What does it do? When does it grow? How does it grow? If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit subscribe now for more awesome mushroom videos. In the first part of understanding mushrooms, we learned that mushrooms are actually their own kingdom in taxonomy, fungi is its own kingdom. We learned a little bit about spores and that they travel on the wind and they cover everything in the forest. Millions of spores are flying around all the time. We learned that the mushroom is the fruiting body of the mycelium. Mycelium is the vegetative part of the fungus and the fruit body is just the fruit and that's the mushroom that you see. We learned that two spores come together and they reproduce sexually. Two different spores need to be together in order to create a new mycelium. And the mycelium is the vegetative part of the fungus, if you will. It is the body of the fungus and it grows thin little wispy white hair-like structures all through the forest floor where you usually can't see them. But if you were to flip over a log anywhere in the forest, you, you have a good chance of seeing some mycelium and that is actually the body of the fungus. The mushroom is just a piece of fruit that grows off of the vegetative part of the fungus. We also learned a bit about mycorrhizal mushrooms, mushrooms that grow in association with trees mainly conifer trees here in the Pacific Northwest. We also learned what a saprotrophic mushroom is, and that is a mushroom that lives on decaying matter, and a mycorrhizal mushroom is one that needs living trees in order to grow. We learned a little bit about gills and veins and pores. We learned a little bit about polypore mushrooms. Thanks for watching episode one. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and click on the channel and you can find that's the last video that was uploaded. In this video, we're gonna get into talking about when exactly do these mushrooms grow? What makes them grow? What makes this mycelium decide to start growing fruit? And that's really what we're gonna be talking about in this series. I'm a member of the Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society. I'm also the creator of Mushroom Wonderland here on YouTube and on Instagram. I'm a bit of a mushroom geek. I've been picking mushrooms for over 30 years. Some people might call me a somewhat expert, but I'm not a professional mycologist. Sometimes I make typos, sometimes I I mispronounce these Latin names. A lot of what I learned is out of field guides that might be a little bit out of date and the fungus world is continuing to grow. DNA is helping to dissect these mushrooms into different classes. So what used to be a huge family now has all kinds of subspecies. And so forgive me if I mispronounce or misspell something. Let's talk about what time of the year are we gonna be able to find mushrooms out in the forest? Let me make this clear one more time if you missed it in the first video. If you're gonna head out in search of wild mushrooms that you wanna put in your basket, bring back to the kitchen, my best advice would be to go for mycorrhizal mushrooms. These are the mushrooms that associate with these conifer trees that grow here in the Pacific Northwest. The other type of mushroom is a saprotrophic mushroom and they're a bit trickier to find because they pop up wherever they find decaying matter that they can feed on, they're not as predictable as mycorrhizal mushrooms. Like mushrooms love moisture, so in the dead of summer, you're not gonna find many mushrooms out. They like spring and they like fall. Most of the mushrooms in the Pacific Northwest grow in the spring and the fall, and some of them carry over through summertime in small microclimates where the moisture is gonna be just right. When it gets over 70 degrees, it starts to get just too hot. Mushrooms do not like to grow in direct sunlight or in direct light at all. They don't like places that are windy, so places where the air is kind of stagnant, and they like high humidity. So at the end of summer when it's been hot, and then it cools down rapidly and starts to rain a lot. The mushrooms absolutely explode in the forest around here. And just my best guess, I would say about 90% of the mushrooms you're looking for are gonna be found in autumn. And that's gonna be from September through the beginning of December. That's typically autumn here in the Pacific Northwest. That's when temperatures are about 50 to 60 degrees. That's when it's raining a lot. And the more moisture, the better flush of mushrooms is gonna happen. So there are certain mushrooms that are gonna like it in the spring right after the snow and the frost melt. 
and the weather starts to warm up and the rains really start to fall. It's usually wet all winter long here in the Pacific Northwest, but once those temperatures reach about 50 or 60 degrees, that's when certain mushrooms are gonna come out in the spring. And that would include the morel family. All the morcella mushrooms love to grow in the spring, as well as oyster mushrooms are coming out in the spring. And these are the two popular edibles that I can think of that you're gonna find in the spring. But the morels, they pop up in the spring. They love it when the snow melts and they're typically found in the mountains. And one thing about morels is that their season is relatively short. Sometime between mid-May and mid-June is about the perfect time to go hunting for morels. And they also are typically on the east side of the Cascade Range. So a little bit of a drive from the Seattle area or the Puget Sound area over here. But then you'll get into morel country and they're a mycorrhizal mushroom. They'll be growing in the forest and you can find them naturally growing in just a perfect, beautiful forest like this. Or you can go to a forest that was burned the summer before and what's happening is that mycelium sensed that there was a fire, the trees are dying, so the mushrooms go into extra fruiting overload and they produce a ton of fruit so that they can spore and head off to new growing forests. So morels are a good one to go find, but they like this little window of temperature and moisture and they've got a relatively short shelf life, so you wanna get your morels and eat them quick because they go bad fairly fast. Another thing interesting about morels is they start growing at lower elevations and they actually go higher and higher and higher as the weather gets hotter. They're gonna not wanna grow where it's really warm. So they'll chase the snow line up the mountains and the higher you climb into June, you're more likely to find black morels in Washington state. Oyster mushrooms are a really popular mushroom, Pleurotus ostriatus. You can find these in grocery stores and they're super common here in the Pacific Northwest, but they're also a spring loving mushroom. But one thing about the oyster is that they can grow from spring all the way through summer and still be found in fall. So they've got like one of the longest fruiting seasons of any mushrooms here in the Pacific Northwest. They love downed hardwood like alder trees. Uh, the majority of oysters that I find seem to be on alder trees. And when the temperatures are just right, then the oyster mushrooms are gonna spring out of that log or that dead tree. And these are an amazing edible, pretty easy to identify. I'm not really gonna go into identification much on this video, but oyster mushrooms, easy to identify very delicious and they have like one of the longest fruiting seasons of any wild mushroom around here. So you can start looking in April and look all through the summer and they just have several fruitings throughout the summer. Oyster mushroom is a really good one for beginners to learn how to go out and pick. It's easy to spot, it's easy to identify and it's really delicious. Now let's get into some of the more popular mushrooms here in the Pacific Northwest that people go crazy for. You hear a lot of people talking about chanterelle or golden chanterelle mushrooms here in the PNW and they happen to come out only in the fall. They do not appear in the spring. So if you're going out in April looking for chanterelles, you're gonna have a long search because you're not gonna find them. They don't like to grow in the spring. That is when most of the mycelium growth is happening. So I've heard it said that if we have a really wet and warm spring, that that will mean a good chanterelle year in the fall. And then when the first autumn rains come and the temperature is between 50 and 60, actually about 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when the chanterelles are gonna go into fruiting overload. These are a very popular mycorrhizal mushroom that are easy to identify because of their bright orange color, their ruffly margin, the veins that run down the stipe, the smell and the taste of chanterelles is unmistakable. I have a video on my channel about picking mushrooms in December and we are finding beautiful golden chanterelles still. It just depends on the temperature and the moisture. I actually find chanterelles in July here in Washington State. There's typically a little fruiting in the summertime from, and if we're having a really mild kind of that June gloom sort of thing going on here in the Northwest, that typically means there's gonna be a lot of summer chanterelles growing. Different species of chanterelles that grow in the summer, one that are affectionately known as the rainbow chanterelle, that is Cantharellus roseocanus, that is the rainbow chanterelle. And you can also find Pacific golden chanterelles or Cantharellus formosus growing in July, but typically they'll have a small fruiting and then they dry up and die because August is the driest month of the year here in the PNW. And then late September, right about now, the rains have started falling. 
the mycelium underneath my feet right now is getting excited and chanterelles are about to start bursting forth from the forest floor. Chanterelles overall have a pretty long growing season and they actually have a long life cycle. So it takes about 44 days for a chanterelle to go from button to full maturity. That's a pretty long lifespan. And it's also one of the longest fruiting seasons of wild mushrooms around here. If you put that with the fact that they're easy to identify and that they're delicious, it's easy to see why a chanterelle is one of the most popular foraged mushrooms here in the Northwest. Some other popular mushrooms here in the Pacific Northwest are the Bolete family or the Porcinis. And these are amazing mushrooms. The Boletus edilis likes to come out at the end of summer, pretty early fall. They really like the warm temperatures and they like a lot of rain. So if it's raining a lot, it's gonna be a Porcini year. So the middle of September when the rains start to fall through the middle of October is about prime time for Bolete season for Boletus edilis and the Porcini mushroom. These mushrooms have a relatively short lifespan. They seem to explode out of the ground and they can grow to full size within a few days. I've walked past a spot and I haven't seen anything growing and three days later came back to find 12 inch around caps of King Bolete. So they seem to just grow overnight and they go crazy, but they also have a really short shelf life. These are beautiful mushrooms, they're fun to find. If you see these mushrooms with the poor surface on the bottom, take a closer look. Down here in the lowlands, west of the Cascades, you're gonna be looking in the autumn. In the warm and wet weeks of autumn is when you're gonna find boletes really growing. The lobster mushrooms are another one of these mushrooms that are gonna be mycorrhizal and it's gonna grow in the autumn. And these also like warmer weather, just like the boletes do, but they're a little bit more like a chanterelle because you can find them later in the season. Typically I find lobster mushrooms or Hypomyces lactiflorum growing in the earlier part of autumn. This is gonna be the middle of September, pretty much to Halloween. That is about the prime time for lobster mushrooms. A lobster mushroom is actually two different mushrooms that are growing together. It's actually a host mushroom, and here in the Northwest, that is a rustle of breva peas, and then it gets parasitized by another fungus, a parasitic fungus called Hypomyces lactiflorum, which completely changes the look and the flavor of the rustle of breva peas into a delectable, sought after culinary delight. They grow mycorrhizally, they grow with these big beautiful conifers. After you get familiar with chanterelles, maybe move on to lobsters. They will typically come out with the rest of the russulas, like the shrimp russula or the russula zarampolina. These mushrooms all come out when it's a little bit warmer and they pretty much stop growing around Halloween, except for in various smaller microclimates. And lobster mushrooms, you're not gonna find them in the spring. You're not going to find them in the summer. You are not going to find them in the winter. They are an autumn mushroom, as are most of these mushrooms I'm talking about. So right now it's September 20th, 2021, and we're coming right into autumn. We just had the first heavy rains of the year this last weekend. And so in my experience, it takes about two weeks for the mycelium to really drink up that water, go into fruit production mode. And about two weeks from now, we're going to be in the money and some mushrooms, which is pretty much gonna be the beginning of October. We're gonna really see mushrooms start to grow around here, which makes for a relatively short growing season because we had a long summer. Now, if it stays mild into December, these mushrooms can continue to grow into winter a little ways, but typically the mushrooms are gonna stop growing around the middle of November, except for a few specific species. Another popular wild edible around here is known as the bluet mushroom or Lapista nuda, and this mushroom likes to grow when it starts to get a little bit colder. So after your lobster mushrooms and your porcinis start to kind of fade away, you're gonna start to see bluets if you're looking in the right place. I threw this one as a wild card because this is not a mycorrhizal mushroom. This is a sapotrophic mushroom and that eats on decaying leaves and decaying wood matter. They prefer to come out a little bit later in the season and I'm explaining this mushroom just to show you that some mushrooms will start growing a little bit later than other ones. Nearing the time of the first frost is when you're gonna see bluets start to pop up. Another very popular and sought after wild edible mushroom, the Matsutake or the Tricholoma magnoliveri. This mushroom is known as the Matsutake. It is related to the Tricholoma Matsutake that grows in Japan and can fetch a thousand dollars a pound for those mushrooms, commonly known as the pine mushroom, but this is a late season mushroom. One thing that really helped me to understand how mushrooms grow is to start growing them myself. And one way you can do that is you can order a kit online. You can get oyster mushrooms or shiitake mushrooms online. One thing that really helped me to understand how mushrooms grow is to grow some myself. 
So one suggestion I would have is to get yourself a grow kit and see exactly how mushrooms grow. You can order them online, you can get mushrooms all over the place. You can get pre-inoculated mushroom farms that actually come in a cardboard box and the mushrooms just grow right out of the sides of it. Typically oyster mushrooms are the easiest mushrooms for you to grow. They grow really fast and it's really fascinating to see how they work. Right here I have a log of shiitake. It's actually a block of shiitake and this started out as just a bag of wood chips that were sterilized and then inoculated with some shiitake spores and then the mycelium grew through all the wood chips and what's happened over the course of the last four months is this has completely turned white and then one weird feature of shiitake is that it then turns brown and it looks like this streusel coating on top and this one is just about ready to fruit. This shiitake block is a really cool way to learn how mushrooms grow. If I was to set this out in my woodshed in the middle of January, it wouldn't do anything. This mycelium will not grow when it's that cold. If I was to set it out in my backyard when it's 90 degrees out in the summertime, it would dry out and it would die. So mushrooms are a little bit fickle, they're a little bit picky, and you need to understand that mushrooms need the right amount of moisture, the right amount of light or lack of light, the right amount of wind or lack of wind. They really like it humid, and then they need the right nutrients to feed on, and all mushrooms are feeding on decaying matter. Mycorrhizal mushrooms are also deriving food from trees that they're getting through the roots of the trees. But to understand mushrooms, if you grow some mushrooms, it'll really help you to understand how the mycelium grows, how it spreads, what it looks like, and then when the mushrooms actually start to grow on top, when the fruiting bodies start to grow on this big vegetative chunk of mycelium, this would typically be inside of a log where you couldn't see it, but this is a, uh, this plastic bag doubles as a clear log and you can see what these shiitakes are looking like. This is a really healthy block of shiitake mushrooms. Thanks for joining Mushroom Wonderland. I hope that you get a better idea of understanding mushrooms and how they reproduce and how they come to be, right? They grow underground for pretty much all year and then when the weather conditions are right, the temperature's right, the autumn mushrooms like to follow a nice hot summer followed by warm rains and they're gonna take off in the forest. So within a couple of weeks, we're gonna have mushrooms going crazy and we're gonna be making all kinds of cool mushroom related content. So if you're a mycophile or you love mushrooms like I do, this is a channel that you need to subscribe to because we're gonna keep coming out with cool mushroom related content. And thanks to you guys and the subscribers, this channel is really blowing up and we're getting excited. Aaron Hilliard, thanks for watching Mushroom Wonderland. Deuces!